Today's message is brought to you by the Partners and Friends and Anthony Trice Ministries. God ordered if you get him, then you get the other stuff. And the Bible says come from among them and be ye separate and talk about the unclean thing. Do you have faith in the Word of God? Let's get into the Word with Dr. Anthony L. Trice. Jerusalem. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Fear not. Don't be afraid. And that's the thing that's getting many of us. We are afraid to try something new. We are afraid to do something we've never did before. Well, guess what? You're not going to get out there in the deep when it comes to God. Peter come. He did what? He didn't think about it. He just... See, no, it's wrong with most of y'all. You think too much. God tell you something. You sit around and start calling me. What you think? <laughs> this is how I discover. When God tell me something, I just do it before I start thinking about it. Because if I think about it too long, I talk myself out of doing it. That spirit of fear really got our people. We are afraid of anything new. Read. Nor be dismayed. Don't be confused. Tomorrow, tomorrow, go out against them. He's telling them what to do. He's telling them how to get victory. He's telling them how to overcome. But are they going to listen and do what he said do? My, watch this. Your deliverance is in my mouth. I said, your deliverance is in my mouth. And see, we, we don't talk about that. He just talking about himself. I ain't talking about myself. Your deliverance is in my mouth. The Bible just said, how can you hear? How can he preach except he be heard? One of the members came to me and said, Bishop Trice, this is what she said. Are you open to get a detox? I said, yeah. I'm always trying something anyway. I won't see me work. I do, I, I, I'm a risk taker. You tell me to do something I think it's God. That's why I'm so blessed. Because I take risks. You'll never get the word being afraid to step out. So what if you fail? So what? Think of me last time. But she said, Bishop, are you open for a detox? I said, yeah, sure. Give me the lady number. We called and she came over. I got a detox. Feel good, too. <laughs> but just imagine if I wasn't open. And I'm going to tell you something. When I was sitting there, I thought about some people that got sickness in their body. And I said, let me call them. The Holy Ghost said, don't you call them. They're not open-minded. So you rather keep going to the doctor, spending thousands of dollars. And it ain't even designed for you to get healed. They make money off your sickness. Me and my wife went over here $25. $25. And it's simple. Just put the feet in some water. She put some stuff. stuff in. Simple. But some people are afraid. You know what toxin do? It causes cancer. It clogs up your cells. I ain't never heard of getting a detox. I'm 50 years old, I ain't never heard it. But I was, oh. So you know what I'm going to do? Get a detox for the rest of my life. <laughs> but you got to be what? Open. And you can't be open if you're not willing to listen to what somebody's trying to tell you. We always think somebody's trying to get over on us. That's a slave spirit. Read. For the Lord will be with you. Read. And Jehoshaphat bound his head with his face to the ground. Uh-huh. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. Watch this. Read. Worshiping. Worshiping. We just got to worship it. Yeah. That's important. Read. And the Levites of the children of the Kohaiites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Read. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, 
Hear me, O oh Judah. He, there you said, hear me. Listen, Judah, what I'm getting ready to say. Or listen, people of God, what I'm getting ready to say to you. Read. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Read. Believe in the Lord your God. Watch this. Believe in God. Somebody say true that. Yes. You know what believe mean? Trust. Now look what he said next. Read. So shall you be established. So if you start trusting God, he will establish you. Why is it you're not established? Because you're not trusting. Watch this. Read. Believe his prophet. Believe who? Believe God and believe my mouthpiece. Believe my men of God. Believe my women of God. So God wants you to trust them and he wants you to learn how to trust people. Now, watch this. Watch this. If I've ever did something as a pastor since you've been here that messed something up in this church, then I can understand why you don't trust me. Right. If I've never did nothing, why you don't trust? I can tell you why. Because it ain't me. It's the folks who came before me. I used to take it personal. But I didn't mature. I didn't grow up. So I don't take it personal now when folks don't like me. I realize they got some baggage. I realize they got issues. I, 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 can I be honest with you? I realize after 14 years of pastor, folk wounded. Folk messed up. So I don't, I don't take stuff personally like I used to. I'm a lot better. I have to think it was me. But I realize it ain't me. It's, it's what your mama did. It's what your daddy didn't do. It's what your uncle did. It's what, so I realized that people have been messed up, but this is not an excuse to stay messed up. That's the problem. Something happened to you at 13, now you're 33, and you still stuck. That is affecting your life. Want me to tell you why? Because you wall yourself in and you wall everybody else out. And some people that God is bringing in your life, they are bringing in your life to help you. But you think everybody out to get you. Because somebody molested you. And I understand. This, I, I understand. Some women that's been molested, they have a hard problem trusting men. So what I do, I treat you like a daughter. I ain't trying to get with you. I ain't trying to hit on you, but I understand you need that love. Now, if you were talking crazy to me, I wouldn't be doing all that. But I understand, even me, men need to be hugged. Watch this. My father has been in my life all my life, so I don't have that problem. But I understand some men do. So I make myself available to father you if you want me to. I ain't talking about telling you what to do. I'm talking about we can sit down and go out to eat and we can rap and talk and we just put it on the table. But most men won't open up and say nothing. That macho spirit is blocking them from just sitting down and saying, man, I'm hurt. What's wrong with that? Watch this. Jesus was a lion and a We can't always just be hard as men. Your, your family your children, your wife need to see a softer side of you, and I'm talking about gay. Right. <laughs> am, I, am I explaining this? Yeah. They need, you don't always need to be hard and rigid and tight and strict. No, no. They need to, you need to hug them. You need to, I kiss my kids. They kiss me. Yeah. My sons included. Yeah. That's what the disciples They love to see me come out. They love to see me come. That's how it is. Everybody don't have a relationship with their kids. Now, me and my kids have had some, some issues with each other. But we forgave and we move on. That's what I'm saying. You can't be walking around here with stuff in your heart and you trying to serve God. It ain't going to work. That's why so many people have a problem with church and preachers. And I understand there are some preachers that have did wrong. I understand that. But I ain't going to give me a chance to mess up. <laughs> All right, am I perfect? No, I'm flesh, I'm human. I fall short. I'm telling you that. You ain't got to tell me, I'm telling you. I'm very transparent. I ain't trying to hide nothing. I ain't trying to hold up some image. I'm trying to, it's too much work trying to ask people. Try to make people impress somebody. I ain't got time for that. I'm this high. I shoot from the hip. So if you don't like the 
and shoot from the hip, you may need to go up the street. I'll tell you the truth. That's what I do. I don't play with folk. I ain't got time to be playing. Folk going to hell. So I got to tell you the truth, and you may get mad at me. But that's okay. Get over it. And embrace it so you can get free. All right, read. Let me get back to this. Let me hear it. Read. And so shall ye prosper. Watch this. If you believe in the Lord thy God and you believe his prophets, notice what he said. So shall you what? So your prospering is based on you hearing the prophet. And when I talk about prophet, I ain't talking about coming to say the Lord. I ain't talking about that. Just a person that's speaking the word. That's all that's what I'm talking about. That's how you prosper. What my job is, is to bring you where God has brought me. Now, if God ain't brought me nowhere, how can I bring you? That's what God told Moses. Bring the people up on this mountain. So Moses' job was to bring the children of Israel up to where he was at. That's what a leader's job is. Am I making sense? All right, watch this read. And when he had consulted with the people. So I just got this. So you know what God does before he has you to lead people? He take you through some of the stuff they're going to go through. So by the time that you minister them, you've been through it yourself. The reason why I gave that advice about filing bankruptcy is because I filed it. Now I got A1 credit. So I walked through the process of doing it and I discovered I don't need no credit repair people. That's all I'm saying. You know what I did? I, I paid my bills. It took me some years, 15 years, to work the system. Now, I'm working their system against them. I didn't go to college to learn that. That came from going through it. Does that make sense? Watch this. I've had several pastors. Bishop McDaniels was my pastor for six and a half years. Bishop Holloway was my pastor for eight years. Dr. Thompson was my pastor for two years. Bishop Bailey been my pastor for five years. So I have a pastor, so I can relate to a pastor. Do I agree with everything they say? No, but I follow them. All right, read. And when he had consulted with the people, read. he appointed singers unto the Lord, read. and that they should praise the beauty of holiness uh -huh. as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Read. And when they began to sing and to praise, the the Lord said ambushments against the children of Israel. Who said ambushments? The Lord. When they did what the prophet told them to do, God got in the midst of what they was doing, and God set an ambush against their enemies. Listen, you don't have to fight your battles. God will fight for you, but you got to hold on to what? Your peace. You got to hold on to peace. You got to stay at rest with God if you're going to fight your battles. Read. And Moab and Mount Seir, uh -huh. which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, uh -huh. utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. They destroyed each other. Watch this. The children of Israel did not have to lift a hand. Someone was working too hard. If we listen to God and do what he say, he'll take it up from there. But a lot of us, we in our flesh trying to make something happen that only God can make happen. And I'm going to tell you something. It takes years to get to a place where you can really trust God. You don't just get saved in six months you trust in God fully. No, no. You have to surrender to God along the way. And I heard somebody say this yesterday. Your confidence comes from your experiences. Once I know God got me, I don't fret like I used to fret. Once God starts showing me that he with me, I don't care what you say or what you do. That's confidence in God. It ain't in flesh. It's in God. And that brings peace in your life. And many of us don't have peace. You know why? Because we're not trusting God. This is what the Bible says. They enter not into my rest because of unbelief. They fail to trust me. So no, you can't rest when you're not trusting. All right, watch this read. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, uh -huh. they looked unto the multitude. Read. And behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth. 
and none escaped. Now look what happened, verse 25, read. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, do you know what spoil is? Stuff. God led them to victory. He led them into abundance. And all they had to do was listen. I had to do is listen. Read. They found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies. Read. And precious jewels which they had stripped off for themselves. Read. They had more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil because it was so much. How many days? Three days. Watch this. Just imagine had they listened. You'd be surprised stuff got God got stuff ready for you. He's already set aside. But he waiting on you to listen. When you listen, watch this. Stuff will manifest. I told y'all I was at a party and I just had a general conversation. I said, how's your daycare doing? She said, I'll get ready to sell it. I jumped on it. She said, let me come and look at it. In it's history. I could have, I could have ignored the fact that she said, I'm getting ready to sell it. But you know what I heard in that? The voice of God. So I I seized that moment. Y'all heard what I'm saying? I seized it. And two weeks later, I bought it. I could have missed that, not being sensitive to the voice of God. Somebody called me two weeks ago. Bitch, you want to buy some, some stuff? Some uh, line car. I said, yeah, where, where you want to meet you? I had, what did I have to lose? So I went, he raised up brand new stuff. I said, give it to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all. We working too hard. You ain't got to lie. You ain't got to steal. You ain't got to swing down no pole. You ain't got to back it up. You ain't got to do none of that. All you got to do is listen to the voice of the Lord, and he'll lead you into victory. We read about uh, Naaman last week. He had leprosy. He came to the prophet. The prophet sent somebody to tell, tell him to go dip. How hard is that? He went and dipped after he took himself through some unnecessary changes. Then he got healed. All through the Bible, you will read where God used somebody to bless somebody else. And we try to be an island. Oh, me and God got it like this. Well, why you ain't got nothing if you and God got it like that? You, you hear what I'm saying? If you really balling, and you really got some fruit, and you walking in abundance, and you don't have to deal with nobody, then that's wonderful. But I don't know too many people like that. Because even after God bless you, he still has to send certain people in your life to help you with the blessing. Because the blessing is not just for you. He told Peter, uh -uh, lunch out in the deep and let down your net for a catch. And Peter had something to say like all y'all. You always got something to say. He said, Master, we've been toiling all night and have Tell you why? Because we don't listen. Now, Peter was a commercial fisherman, so he knew fishermen. He knew that it was too late for the fish to be biting them fish, biting early. But Jesus came and messed up his theology and said, Throw it out again. And he did it. And what happened? He caught a multitude of fish. Now, watch this. Why did God do this? Peter was a fisherman. And God know that Peter had his call, a call in his life to win souls. He, what did he call Peter? A fish of what? Yeah. So he showed him how to catch people by showing him how to catch fish. Yeah. Most of us in here are gifted and talented and your prosperity and your wealth and your deliverance is tied to your gift. But you don't know what your gift is. Because you won't sit down long enough and seek God so he can reveal it to you. Let me show you this when I'll be done. 2 Kings chapter 4. We are the most 
gifted people on the face of the earth. Can nobody out dance us? <laughs> Can nobody out jump us? I'm telling you, we are gifted as a people. But why is it we so broke? Second Kings. Now some of us get it. I know some of y'all get it. And you moving on up. And you know what I realize? I hate to say this. Some people they don't get it. You know why? They don't want it. And ain't nothing you can do about that, but just keep on moving. Second Kings chapter 4. Watch this. This is going to be good. Verse 1 and 7. Read. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha. Now watch this. Now that cried a certain cried out for pity. And a woman in the Bible always represents the church. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the prophets of Elijah saying, read. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. The preacher dead. The woman is the church. The prophet is the preacher. So look at the state that she's in now that the preacher dead. She don't know what to do. And you're not going to know what to do if you don't connect to a man or a woman of God and let them speak into your life. Watch this. Why was she crying? Read. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. Her husband feared the Lord. And the creditor has come to take unto him my two sons. But he left his family in a rut. That's why I ain't caught up in titles, in positions. All that don't mean nothing if your natural life is a mess. He was a true prophet of God. But when he died, he left his family in a rut. Why come? Because evidently he didn't take care of his business naturally. And we know about the spirit and the hook of Mashiach and the cut, turn the cartwheel and spit on our head. But we don't know how to function in life. Some of us need to learn some people skills. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some of us need to learn how to take out the trash and cut the grass and wash the dishes. It's simple stuff, man. How you holding your house nasty? How you holding and your house is a mess? Cleanliness, this ain't scripted, is next to what? How your house a mess? The spirit ain't told you to clean up the house? Let me seek you out. The spirit ain't told you to wash them dishes? The, the spirit ain't told you to wash them nasty, dirty clothes? But he told you, but thus say the Lord. Just saying. Read. And so prophet, God didn't tell you to get your stuff in order just in case you don't be here. Read. And Elisha said unto her, Watch this. What shall I do for thee? What do you want, woman? Tell me. Tell me. What hast thou in the house? Sometimes, in order to help people, you got to ask some questions. I know when I'm constantly people, I have to kind of pick in their life. They don't like it either, though. Tell them, hold on. No. Why does that happen? What's going on with this? I'm trying to get it out of there. You can't help somebody there and tell you what's wrong. If you hurt, and you don't tell me where you're hurting, how can I help you? And we've been taught what goes on in the house. That's from the pits of hell. How many been taught that? That was bad theology. Because some of y'all grown and still won't talk. Am I, I'm trying to help you. All this behavior and dysfunction is coming from a dysfunctional home. You got men, even now, in the house and won't talk to nobody. You walk into the house, won't talk to your wife, won't talk to your, your daughters. You ain't talking to nobody. And you think you're doing a good job because you go out and work and pay the bills. It's more to being a man than you pay the bills. But most men have not been taught.
taught that because they have not had example. And I understand that. But if you become teachable, we'll help you. Same thing with women. Your mama told you ain't no man no good. So you think all men are dogs? Well, why you get married? Why do you want, if you feel all men are dogs, why do you want to get married? Because you hot? I ain't See, some of them are hot. They don't really want no man, they just want sex. Uh, uh, let me hold the ghost. You don't want no man, you just want sex. You want somebody to put your fire. Can you cook? Can you clean? Read. And she said, and she said, thy handmaid have not anything in the house except the. Oh, I just read that. Oh, I'm sorry. Watch this. Thy handmaid has not anything in the house. That's what she said. Did she have something in the house? What did she have? She couldn't see it. You know why? Because she was in distress. She was in distress. I'm just saying it. Read. Accept a pot of oil. He said, what do you have in your house? I have nothing but a pot of oil. That was the answer to her dilemma. It was right up under her nose. Watch this, read. Then he said, Then he said, Go and borrow these Watch vessels. Watch this. He's pulling something out of her that she didn't know what was in her. Yeah. Read. Watch this. Vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Uh huh. Even empty vessels. Read. Borrow not a few. She told her, she, he told her what to do. Look, look up. She was a saleswoman. But she didn't know it. Until she connected. With a man like God. You know what the Bible talks about midwives. You know what a midwife job is? Is to help somebody give birth to something. Does some things. What well, well, let me say this. In the natural, you can't have a baby by yourself. You need somebody that's called a doctor. And what his job is, he tells you to push, and as you push, he pull. My job to pull while you push. <laughs> some of y'all pregnant, my, some, some of y'all pads do. <laughs> it's because you have not been connected with the right people. Watch this, read. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy son. He told her specifically what to do and how to do this. Read. And shall pour out into all those vessels. Read. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. Read. So she went from him. Uh huh. And shut the door upon her and her sons. Read. Who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Notice they was working together as a family. Why is it we can't come together as a family? Why we can't come together as a people? Let me tell you why. Because everybody got their own mindset. Read. And it came to pass. When the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. You know what this oil represents? Her ability. That's what the anointing is. God's ability rubbed on you. She didn't even know she was a salesman until she got in this rut. And the man of God pulled it out of her. Watch this. She went from being into debt to her own business, debt free, and more money to live off of. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus, located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136, or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org and we thank you for your continued support.